Hey everyone, this is Jamie Jill Wright coming to you again today at Madlet Musings Podcast. And I have Connellan Cassette with me. Hello. It's good to see you too, and I love having you on. And it's just super fun. We've already been chatting, but I decided to hit record. <laughs> Right, I know, and get nothing done, and no, no, no more books would ever be published because we'd just be talking all day. So, we'll be productive. We can do this. We can get this done. <laughs> I know. Yeah, right. Oh, deadlines! You gotta love them. So, uh, but you have a book that is coming out while you're writing the next book, but this one is Shield of the Mighty, which is book two in. Yes. <laughs> It's gorgeous. You know, the thing I like about this series is the way they've really emphasized the sky and the different colors of the sky. Yeah, is that a you request? Yes, is it? I wanted okay. a great big landscape. And I actually, um, the first one has like a sunrise. Okay, and yep. so I thought, it, I thought it'd be really cool over the course of all four of them to kind of have a sunrise and then midday and then evening and then night. So I'm hoping that they'll go with me. I love and that. So this one, the, the, the sun is a little bit higher up in the sky. So you can yeah. see the sun rays. So yeah. yeah, I love that. That's such a great idea. That's such a great idea. Well, and I've never actually been to the Middle East. But all the pictures that I've seen, and then my dad was to the, in the Middle East for a while, um, it's, is that it's really broad and expansive. And so your covers really kind of show that. It's not a small, like, in Wisconsin here, we have hills and woods and forests, so it feels more enclosed. But he said, my dad said it was very wide open. It is, yeah. And there's so many different, like, the north is really beautiful and trees and everything. And, you know, of course, you got the desert, but you have these hilly areas and the mm -hmm. highlands. And so there's a lot of different uh, topography mm -hmm. um, that is fun to explore. So, yeah, that's kind that's of why awesome. I, this, in this series especially, I wanted to kind of set things in different places that people wouldn't uh -huh. normally know about. So, right. Right, which is really cool because, again, that area is you, so often with biblical fiction, it's Jerusalem, you right. know, or it's like these really pop Bethlehem, Nazareth, these popular places that we know because of the Bible times. And you're stretching yeah. us, Connie. I am. You're stretching yeah. us. Most of this book, well, maybe half of it or part of it is in this town called Maresha or Maresha. Okay. And it's got all these like huge underground limestone caves that wow. um, are natural, but they also have been like enlarged. So there's, and so it's been kind of fun to explore what that landscape looked like. And mm -hmm. of course I book. So of course. Yes. That's fun. awesome. So oh, tell us. Go there. Oh yes, you should, because you love to travel. So you do, you get all sorts of cool pictures showing up on my Facebook feed. And I'm always like, oh, Connie's traveling again. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> for those of us stuck at home, you might want to follow Connellan's Facebook and her social medias because they're always filled with fun things. So Shield of the Mighty is book two in yeah. the trilogy that I can't remember the title of. It's actually four. Oh, that's right. Four books and it's called the King's Men series. Okay. Four books. And if I remember correctly, they involve cousins. Yes. Four okay. cousins who, um, against their parents' wishes, run off to fight for King Saul. And mm. one of them goes missing. Mm -hmm. All right. So book two. Right. Them together. And so that thread of the missing one, the missing cousin, is through all four of them, correct? Well, I guess we'll be. Oh, we have mystery today, people. Spoiler-free zone. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It makes it really sad because I want to ask all the questions and I get nothing back in return. <laughs> All right. Well, what can you tell us about Shield of the Mighty and what we can well, read so far? So this is, is um, from the point of view of the second cousin, and his name is Zevi. And people who have read Between the Wild Branches, which is the second book of my last um, series, The Covenant mm -hmm. House, will have met Zevi as a boy. He was um, nine or ten around that age, and he had been taken in a raid by the Philistines and ends up um, in Ashdod with our hero, Lucio. Okay. 
And so we get to know him as a little boy. Um, so this is his journey continuing on. And um, I've, I've been very excited to write this book. It was really fun to kind of deal with some of the trauma that he dealt with and, and give him just a really beautiful arc and a hero yeah. one that I just think that's imperfectly done. That's cool. So now is he, now is he fighting against the Philistines in this book? Well, of course. Of Absolutely. course. Absolutely. So he, he didn't like, he, he didn't morph revenge. into the Philistine culture. Okay. He okay. wants revenge. I mean, he endured a lot. He witnessed some awful, awful things and mm -hmm. he has really out for revenge in this book. So we're going to see how that works for him. Interesting. Okay. So what did you find when you were researching that were some of the biggest differences between the Philistine culture and the Hebrew culture? Well, um, from the archaeology, we can actually see that the Philistines were really um, quite sophisticated. Okay. Um, they had some technology that was pretty fascinating, actually. Really? Uh, they found that they actually had like indoor plumbing. What? And uh, yeah, indoor plumbing. So I don't know, but that's it, cool. It, it's really surprising. But and, yeah. and they they came from um, the island of Crete, which mm -hmm. I just recently visited. That, so that was fun. Um, and recently, um, I think it's been about five years. It was like just when I started writing about the Philistines, okay. um, scientists found DNA from a Philistine graveyard. And so they were actually able to tie them genetically to the island of Crete, which is fascinating. No cool. way. Um, and so you can see the Philistine um, material culture is very connected to the islands of Crete and the early Greeks and Mycenaeans and the Minoans. And um, they, they took a lot of that Aegean culture with them. And so uh, you find that in the archaeological records. So yeah, they had really interesting. big cities and, um, you know, uh, their architecture was a mm -hmm. lot more um, advanced than the Israelites, who were mostly kind of a nomadic people and, yeah. you know, shepherds and farmers and things. And so I kind of highlight that, you know, okay. that they were kind of looked down upon for that um, by mm -hmm. the Philistines. Who just had, they had a lot more wealth. They had huge armies. And um, the Bible even says they have iron chariots, which probably, you know, they don't, they're not completely made out of iron, but maybe right. iron wheels and things like that, yeah. that that the, the Israelites didn't have. They didn't have mm -hmm. iron weapons because they didn't have the technology to heat the iron ore high enough so that they could make the iron that, you know, the steel, the carburized iron. So that's why the Israelites had to take their tools to the Philistines to get them oh, fixed goodness. because they didn't have the technology. And that's in the Bible. That's really cool. Though. And, the, and now they found it in the archaeological records. So. Oh my goodness. Okay. Sorry. So that's, you go on so, about that. no, I know. I love it. I love it too, because, you know, I mean, there's only so much we can talk about your book because it's would be full of spoilers. So let's talk about the history behind it. But you know, one of the things that's so exciting to me <laughs> is, okay. So in my childish mind, when I was a kid, you get the story of David goes up against Goliath, who's the big hulking Philistine. And I have always had this misguided image in my head of the Philistines being this like barbaric, um, backward kind of like people who lived in the hills type of a thing. And the Israelites were the ones that were established, but it's almost like a swap. Like it, I'm absolutely. completely wrong. Absolutely. They had really beautiful homes and organized streets and what do you call it a sewer system running mm -hmm. through the streets with gutters. And like, it, it was amazing what they, they had. That's phenomenal. So, and unfortunately, because of the political stuff that goes on in that area, they haven't mm -hmm. been able to dig a whole lot. They've done more up in Ashdod that is kind of owned by Israel. Okay. Um, but there's so much that we don't know because it's very deep or, you know, yeah. gone. Over there, yeah. so. Don't you wish there was like unfettered access to the Middle East wonderful. for archaeological purposes? Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Because you kind of feel like because of the war-torn elements of that area, there's a part of me that's like, if we could take all of that away and have peace, I feel like they could find stuff almost quickly. Like a lot of the stuff it's isn't probably like Egypt where done. you're digging deep, 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 deep till you find something. But. For sure. Yeah. And what's so wild is that I planned this series years ago, like okay. 20, 20, 
Is that right? Yeah, I think 2020 is when I planned this. Mm-hmm. Um, so none of this stuff was going on in Gaza and and with Palestinians. Yeah. And my books literally like are in the same place. It's bizarre. Like Mauritius is very very close to where things happen on October 7th, and okay. um, like the book that I'm writing now has things going mm-hmm. on in Gaza. And so, um, it's really interesting how. I guess the Lord managed that timeline ahead of time. Well, it's also interesting how, I hate to say it, I want to tread carefully. When you look at current events, how much they line up with things scripturally of how the Bible has always said that the Middle East would always be experiencing these types of wars. And and, the cycles that have gone through and similar similar events that unfortunately have happened again. Yeah. Yeah. So rough on both sides. I'll just say that (laughs) extremely, extremely. So, all right. So we have the Philistines. Um, I have to ask, were they known for being extremely brutal in the military or were they more like strategic? The only real record that we have about the Philistines is from the Bible. Okay. And so obviously it's from the point of view of the Hebrews and from what, what we see of the way that they, you know, acted, they were pretty brutal and yeah. obviously they worshiped um, pagan gods mm-hmm. and there is evidence on the Island of Crete that the Minoans were doing human sacrifices. Oh. And so I kind of pulled that into um, some of, some of the, yeah. the stuff I wrote in, in my first uh, in the covenant house. And so, yeah. you know, I, I, I write them the way that the Bible describes them. And, right. um, so, yeah. Right. Well, and that's interesting too, because if you think about it, so many of the idols, the gods that the other cultures outside of the Hebrew nation, a lot of them had human sacrifice in some form or another yeah. built into they it. Absolutely. Did. They yeah. Did. Yeah. And they were, they were sacrificing babies and they would, they would sacrifice them and they would bury them in pots and then they would put them under the threshold of their house as like a blessing. And they have found evidence of that within the archeology span that they had these babies in uh, under their thresholds to bless their house. Wow. No wonder we needed a Messiah. (laughs) It was a, you know, I, and I tamp down a lot of what I write, you know, when I'm, when I'm writing that because, Nobody wants to read about that, but, right. um, yeah, it was a brutal culture and just the tribalistic nature of things was so different from what we can ever, what we mm-hmm. can comprehend through our Western yeah. eyes post, yeah. post Jesus changing the world. Uh, right. So. Thank the Lord for that. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Bring some hope into the world. Oh, okay. So we have the Philistines, we have the Hebrews, we have the Israelite culture. We have a hero who's out for revenge, and then we have a hero in which you alluded to the fact that you really loved. So what can you tell us about her? Well, the, um, when the Israelites were begging for a king, remember, they were like, give us a king. We want a king yep. to be like everybody else around us. And Samuel gave them this warning about what would happen if they had a king. And he was going to come in and take their money and he was going to take their land and he was going to take their young people to run in front of his chariots and do all these things. And one of the things that's in that list is mm-hmm. that he would take your um, your men, young men and young women to be perfumers. And that kind of mm-hmm. captured my imagination. And so I thought, okay. wouldn't, wouldn't it be interesting to have a heroine that is a, an expert perfumer? She just knows plants she knows the land Mm. and is able to make these beautiful scents and so um sevi is sent out to go recruit soldiers but he has kind of a secondary command that he needs to look for skilled craftsmen and um different people and so he happens to run across johanna in her um little shop with her perfumes and of course he's fascinated by her he Mm -hmm. smells what she's made first but he sees her and he's pretty captured by her so yeah um i I won't tell you much past that except for um he he might make a few bad decisions um on the way to to kind of redemption okay 
Well, I guess we have to follow the journeys of the struggles of the heroes and the heroes. You do. You do. <laughs> a perfumer. So perfumers really did have kind of a special role back then, because I guess when you think about it, perfume was probably part of their hygiene and culture in a lot were. of different ways. Yeah. yeah. It's not like they took showers every day. So I think perfume was right. a important thing. Or so. ran to Walmart to get their deodorant sticks. Yeah. Replaced. And they have some really, like, they've fa actually found in, like, um, Pharaoh's tombs and things, perfumes that are still, you know, like, they can figure out what the scents are, and they're very really? complex. Like, it's it's not just, you know, a flower or two, like, it's complex um, perfumes that they were making and distilling and wow. um, using exotic plants and flowers. So, um, yes. I, it was fun to kind of dig into that and under try and understand how that yeah. works. And how yeah. the sense work together. So. so, how do you find that out? Because, I mean, like when you think yeah. back to the perfumers, it's not like they had perfume books that <laughs> you can go back and research, like, oh, here's the recipe. Well, yeah. And I just kind of have to piece things together. I, okay. I you know, go back and I'll, I found one website that had just all the native plants and it's mm. in, in Hebrew. And so I had to, to have it translated into English and just try to understand what are some of the native plants that would be used for perfume. And there's actually um, some perfumers that are using, you know, older styles of, of making perfume. And so I just, mm -hmm. I don't know, I just wander all over the internet and find fascinating. <laughs> Watch videos. <laughs> How did people write books before the internet? I have absolutely no idea. I think they just made most of it up because... I think so. I think so. Yeah. Because, you know, I remember my dad and I were trying to research something really specific and I kept going to the encyclopedia and it's really yeah. limited. Encyclopedias were so limited yeah. in like how much information they even had. It's like, here's a paragraph yeah. on this and it's over. Yeah. And now I can get on Google Earth and go look yeah. at the setting. Right. My new thing is I have a VR headset, and so I, no, if I you need don't. some inspiration, I go to Google Earth, on, and there's some program on there that I can go and fly in and look around and see the places, and it's no so inspiring. No way. I love it. I love it. So yeah, when you're not traveling, you're still traveling. You're just it's fine, but no. <laughs> like, we only play the sword, the, the you know, all the fun right. games. Right, right. I wonder if they have something on there for like haunted places in the United States because I could oh, do that. I would guarantee travel through the haunted houses and I would guarantee it. There are so many cool things on VR. I just absolutely love it. I've only done not to get off on a rabbit trail, but to get off on a rabbit trail. I've only done VR once and it was a roller coaster. Oh and I was sitting in an office chair. My friend was like, You need to sit down to do this. Oh, I'm like, yeah. well, I don't have to sit down and do this. And he goes, no, seriously, sit down. And so I'm doing this roller coaster ride. And by the time it was over, I'm like, I had all the adrenaline emotions of actually yeah. being on a roller coaster. I felt dizzy. I felt nauseated because that's how I always feel. On ro I'm not a roller coaster person. Yeah. And I took off the, and I'm like, I no, I don't yeah. even feel safe in this office chair at this point yeah. in time. <laughs> it is really, it's, a, it's amazing technology. And it just yeah. really honestly, when I feel like I need to get some inspiration, it is a yeah. great way for me to like immerse myself in the world. It's, it's, it is limited because it's like only like places near roads and certain places. So, right. um, especially in Israel, like there's only certain places I can go, but just to be able to just kind of be there is right. awesome. Yeah. Cause yeah. I can't just on a plane. I wish I could. But. I know. And, and now probably isn't the best time to plan a trip. Yeah. So yeah. Well, we were on a great trip. I know, you were. So that's been postponed. Yeah. So I hope we can settle down and we can go next year or the year I do, too. I do, too. Marino's will have to be watching for that one, too, because that sounds like it's going to be a pretty phenomenal trip. Yeah. But, okay, so Shield of the Mighty releases August 20th. It is the second in a book of four. So we have two more coming. And you, don't you have a prequel novella that goes I, with this, I too? I actually have two. Um, the okay. first one is The Wedding Gift. Mm -hmm. And um, that one is actually up on Amazon. You can you can get that or download okay. it on Kindle Unlimited. And then the second one is The Blind Scribe. 
And um, that one is actually available right now free if you pre-order like any, you can do the audiobook, you can do whatever. Um, if you pre-order that, you can go to my website and you can download that. And you put in your information about your purchase mm -hmm. and you can download that one for free right now. So Cool. And that'll only be available until it launches and then it's going to go away for a little while. It's going to get away. So, Ooh. So it's a good time yeah. to get those pre-orders in and then take advantage yeah. of going to your website. Those are prequels that take place years before when these four cousins are boys. And okay. So it's kind of fun to see them as boys and yeah. you know, kind of the evolution of their friendship. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. The other thing I like about this series too is the fact that you're you're following four boys or four men. Because so often you'll see series are tied together because of the women. Yeah. And I think it's kind of cool that you've you've gone with the the other gender yeah. on this one. It's a fun give, challenge to do yeah, that. Yeah. Give the guy some page time. It's about time yeah, to get I do. I mean, it's both point of views. I do have yeah. hero and heroine point of views. It's not just a hero, but right. um, it has more kind of male focus. So yeah. it kind of taps into a different side of my brain to write guys. Right. You have your husband like read it. Now, is this what he'd really think? <laughs> oh, my husband does not read fiction. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> no. He said he's waiting for the movies, so that'll be a while. Oh, he did read the first yeah. one. I was really proud of him. He listened to the audiobook of Counted with the Stars. So, Oh, well, uh, there you go. That was really cool, yeah. There you go. He's got one up on my husband. My husband made it through half of one of my books. Really? When I was, when I was really sick, and I was, having, I was in the ICU for a while several years ago and, and struggling with some, some stuff with Lyme disease, he picked up one of the books because he was wondering if there was something I was, you know, when you say you write ghost stories and haunted stuff, he's yeah. like, has she been getting involved in something I'm not aware of? <laughs> has she been researching? He said, I got through half your book and I wasn't worried anymore. And I was also oh. really bored. <laughs> oh my God. I don't get it. But, I don't you know, understand it. I don't understand it. I don't either. But, you know, I guess it takes all kinds because you need people who, you know, are interested in other things. So some of the things like, I mean, he'll read biblical Hebrew and he'll read the yeah. biblical Greek manuscripts because he's sure. he went to school for that. And I'm like, ew, no. And he goes, how would you not want to? And I'm like, ew, no. <laughs> so we've just kind of agreed to leave each other in our own lanes. There you go. <laughs> Do your own thing. <laughs> right, right. Oh, super fun. All right. So um, the book again releases August 20th, Shield of the Mighty. Book one would be helpful to read before this one. It would. They could be read as standalones. Okay. Uh, I think you could re dig into this one and and pretty much know what's going on. But okay. it's just a much more satisfying experience yeah. because they're all tied together and because there is a thread of mystery that goes through it. I all right, and that's available too in ebook, audiobook, paperback, all that. So great. Well. So where do readers go? What is your website? If they pre-order the book, they want to get the prequel novella, or they just want to get on your newsletter list, where do they go? Mm -hmm. And I can attest too, because I'm part of the group. Groupie. Um, but you put some neat stuff about archaeology and stuff too in there a lot of times too. Well, yeah. Minor details, Connie. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's been really fascinating. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, everybody, you're definitely going to want to follow this lady because she's got some fun stuff. And um, I love her biblical era fiction, I'll put it, because you don't do biblical retellings of actual biblical stories. You set it in that time period. Right. Right. Sounds good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Connie, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm excited for this book. 